Hey guys, welcome to another walk-in Wednesday. So this one is going to be about the K98 carbine. You can see the full assembly as it came in. When it came in, I had to like figure out all these parts. I have them laying around here because it's quite an assembly. Let's take the rifle first. The rifle is very common. Um, it's a K98, K for carbine, 98, actually the patent date was 1898, which means this was used pre-World War I, all through World War I, between the wars, World War II, they went, it, it was made by Mauser and went to countries all over the world because it was so effective and accurate and reliable. Phenomenal rifle. Coming into World War II, uh, it's a bolt action rifle, which later was replaced by the G43, the K43, and also the uh, machine pistol uh, MP40. Um, the United States was doing the same thing, though, because they had the 1903 Springfield, if you know that one. That was a bolt-action rifle that was used in World War I all the way through Vietnam. So these rifles were very accurate, very reliable. This is not a, a, a exciting deal when it walks in the door, other than the fact that it's in phenomenal condition. This one is dated 1940. It has a Mauser code on it. Uh, the 42 is a Mauser code, comes with an original sling, um, and it's just in, in phenomenal condition. There's a couple things to look for when you're looking at a K98, by the way. One thing that uh, lowers the value, about half of the ones we get have mismatched bolts. Um, and that's because if you watch fear, uh, period photographs or newsreels, they'll show this, the troops are surrendering. They're throwing their K98 in the one big pile over here, throwing the bolt over here. And you'll actually see a mountain of K98s and a mountain of bolts separated, uh, and that way they knew that it wouldn't accidentally discharge. But then after the war, some entrepreneurial gun broker guy came in and started putting these all together. He, of course, just grabbed a bolt and grabbed a rifle. They mail them off to the United States, and they sell them pretty cheap, but the bolts are mismatched. So watch out for that. You want to make sure everything is numbered correctly if you want a true collector value. Um, Secondly, if they came in after 1986, they were import marked, and that hurts the value because it's not original. Import marked often was right here, uh, so this one has no import mark. It's completely matching. And thirdly, it's what we call a duffel cut. Uh, duffel cut, it just as the name would apply, uh, imply, the uh, veterans would put, take the, uh, the action and throw it in their duffel bag. They would take the stock, and try to throw that in their duffel bag, but it stuck out about that much. So they would cut it right here and um, take it home. And when they get back together, they uh, glue it back together, put the brace back on there. Nobody knows the difference. But when I figure that out, it's going to hurt the value a little bit. So this one is, is a little more exciting than most and more valuable than most in that it's dated 1940. It's an early gun. It's got no duffel cut. It's got no import marks, and it matches completely. Now let's dissect this a little bit more. Uh, the first accessory that this one has that I rarely see, and I'm going to talk a lot about throwaways. Uh, this, this is a muzzle cover, and it's, uh, I also would consider it a throwaway. Here's why. It's pretty hard. It keeps the mud and uh, dirt from getting in there. It's kind of hard to take off. Covers the muzzle. Push down, it's spring-loaded, go over and off. So that's a pretty rare item. Uh, but as you know, with all that, every time you stop and take a water break, and then you know, you don't want to mess with this putting this on and off if uh, you're suddenly ambushed. And also, when we talk about the grenade launcher, you'll say you can't you can't use the grenade launcher. So this is a throwaway, but it actually adds a lot of value because there's not many still around. Here's another throwaway item, a big throwaway item. In fact, I've never seen one before for the K98. This is an action cover. It has the Waffen proofs, which just means it was inspected for the Army, found to be of decent quality. The action cover, it took me a long time to get this on. So it covers the action. Keeps, again, keeps the mud and the rain away. If you're on the Russian front, keeps the snow away. Um, but it doesn't keep the Russians away because uh, they'll, they'll nail you. Um, so it, it fastens on, but it actually is a lot more difficult than it looks. Each, what I had to do is move it up here, fasten it, 
pull it down, continue fastening it. So you can imagine the soldiers going to war, putting this thing on, throw it away. Makes it very rare. That actually, uh, I'm told, just the cover is worth about $1,000 to $1,500, which is astounding. But there are very few around because, again, it was, it was thrown away. Now, for the important piece of, of this assembly, it comes with a grenade launcher. I've seen the grenade launchers before, and honestly, I didn't even know how they worked. So here, here's what I learned. So the, the uh, grenade launcher goes right on top. It opens up here. You can see how it f fits, fits over the muzzle, and then you just lock it on down. Got to turn it the right way, though. That's the grenade launcher, adds a lot of uh, forward weight. Now, what I'm told um, uh, when vets are interviewed and when I've, what I've seen on the internet, um, there was one grenade guy per squad. Um, later on in the war, there might be two, but generally there are only one because there's a lot of weight with this. And then there would be a box of the actual grenades. This is an original grenade. Again, very rare. Don't throw this away. We think this is inert, but we're not sure. Let's see if we can find out here. Okay, just kidding. It is, it is inert, this, this uh, primer on screws. And these were rifled. You can see the rifling. This is actually Bakelite. I was surprised by that. The original ones, it had Bakelite with rifling. You put it in and it twists. You can see how that twists. Um, so you fire the primer in here. This is an anti-personnel grenade, meaning when it, when it lands, it would explode outward and, and kill within a radius. This, however, from what I've uh, researched, this is uh, anti-tank round. Um, so again, it's rifled, it goes in here. Uh, when it comes out, the charge is, is all funneled toward the front. So when it hits the tank, the explosion goes inward as opposed to out. So that's an anti-tank round. Th this, I'm told, is a replica. I wouldn't know the difference other than it's nice and shiny. Anti-tank round. And now there's one other piece. Again, this is going to be a throwaway because it takes, uh, it takes a little time to get this attached. Before I put this on, you can see there's a bracket that will go around the uh, chamber. There's a level here. I'm not sure how much I'd be checking the level if a tank's coming at me. Uh, and then there's a, uh, a meter range, range finder. So you, it goes up to 200 meters. From what I'm told, uh, in combat troops said they, they usually used them for close up. In other words, you waited till the tank got pretty close to you because you didn't want to waste the round. The sling gets in the way a little bit, so you want to move that out of the way. We're going to pop this on the top here. Screw it. Okay, and then we tighten this down, and the range finder is on the rifle along with the grenade launcher. We can look through this sight, we can line it up on a tank. We can also push this little button and it will move like this. So, let me just demonstrate how that would work. Let's say I'm going to set it at 200 yards. I actually aim at the tank like this. The weird thing is, if I put it on my shoulder, I can barely see it. It's very awkward, but it gets the right angle to get the tank at 200 meters. You can see how awkward it is, aiming and firing. Now, this is, this is the mystery that I solved. This assembly also came with these wooden bullets. Now, when I first got these, I thought, okay, these are training rounds, but never, I actually never heard of wooden bullets used as training rounds. Uh, so this is an 8 millimeter round, which is correct for the K98. Uh, we've got a few of these. And I was also wondering, how in the world do they ignite the grenade to shoot out the top? The answer is, they use wooden bullets. So they would put one round in. Fire the wooden bullet, it would hit the primer at the bottom, spring-loaded, ignites it, and it shoots. Amazing, isn't it? Never knew that. Never saw one of these before. I, I wonder how many of you have never seen one either. Back to the rangefinder, and again, these are all original. They're all Waffen-stamped, which means inspector-proofed. 
uh, amazing, amazing devices. But I mentioned that this was a throwaway, and, um, and here's why. You know, first of all, to hook all this up, and then you want to use your rifle. You know, you want to use your rifle so this kind of gets in the way. And I'm wondering how many people actually aimed it and shot it like this. Um, and the reason being, this is a one ounce, a bullet is about a one ounce charge. This is a one pound charge. So imagine the kick of a bullet. You know the kick of a bullet. This, this, is, this is quite a kick. With a grenade in there, uh, with the amount of charge, I can imagine it would bruise or dislocate your shoulder. You wouldn't want to shoot it more than once in this position. So what they did is they shot it more like this. They would put it on the ground. They would set everything up, put the grenade down in there. Again, we hope this is innate, uh, inert. I would fire my wooden bullet and the grenade would take off. Now, there's only one guy in the unit that's really good at this, so he probably practiced a lot. And um, the, when they interview soldiers, they basically said they, they didn't use this, this piece. So that's why I, I believe you don't see very many of these. I don't think they were used very often. Again, probably more of a throwaway item, but they would, they would tend to shoot their grenade launch in, in this position. Now, just a couple other quick things that also came with this assembly. Again, what makes this so special is all the things that with, came with it. And you can see there's a lot of really rare items that uh, were thrown away in the battlefield and therefore hardly ever encountered by collectors. This is the bayonet, nothing really special. It fits on the end. It's a common bayonet dated 1940, just like the rifle. Um, but look at the uh, bluing on that blade. It was hardly used at all, just like the rifle. It's phenomenal condition. The leather is in beautiful condition. All original from 1940. Um, also comes with these uh, cartridges, cartridge holders for your ammo. A tool. Uh, this is for the grenade launcher to uh, loosen it. And then we have two manuals that came with the assembly. This is a manual from 1936, and this is a, a later wartime manual. Uh, also comes with this assembly. So exciting stuff, and we've got a lot more coming in every day. So you want to stay tuned, watch more videos, make sure you like and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.